Hello friends. In this review, we will get acquainted with the updated model of the ZigBee Network Coordinator from the ZigStar project, use G01, based on the CC2652P7 module. I have talked about previous versions, as well as their Chinese clone, in my previous videos, the links to which you can find in the description. Special thanks to the Mind and UA store, which provided me with this device for testing. You can find the link to it in the description under the video, I recommend it as a reliable and proven partner. In the practical part of the review, I decided to show the process of installing the coordinator in the working ZigBee 2 MQTT system with the USB ZigBee Stick Sunoff ZB Dongle P. As I have shown the installation of the second instance of Z2M at least three times in past videos, the links, I remind you, can be found in the description. The key question in such a replacement is, will it be necessary or not to repair all connected devices? You will get the answer to it later in the video. And before we start, as per tradition, I ask you to like this video, which helps promote it on YouTube, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so before. Device Type ZigBee, LAN, USB, Wi-Fi Gateway. Control Modules, ESP32, LAN8720, CH340C. ZigBee Module, CC2652P7. Power, USB-C or Power over Ethernet 802.3 AF. Maximum Number of Connected Devices, up to 300. LED Indicators. Blue, Power. Red, USB Mode. Yellow, connection to ZigBee 2 MQTT. Mode change by button press. Single press, switch between USB and LAN modes. Hold 2 to 4 seconds, turn LEDs on and off. Hold 4 to 8 seconds, enable firmware mode. Hold 10 seconds, reset the device when power is connected. The main differences from previous versions, updated ZigBee module, support for more devices, 300 instead of 200 on CC2652P2, LED control, button controlled modes, updated firmware with a web interface. The new version of the coordinator is designed for a case that was used in its Chinese counterparts, HandGeek, a review of which you can also find in the description. The size is 73 by 72 by 27 millimeters, available in both white and black, as seen in this video. Besides the color, you can choose a version with dual power support through USB-C and power over Ethernet, which is the version I received for testing, or only with USB power. On one of the side faces, there are ports for connecting a network cable, USB-C, which besides power can also serve as a data transfer interface, a button, and an antenna connector. An antenna is included in the package. An external comparison with the SM Light SLSB-06 coordinator, the review of which you can also find in the description. It has similar functionality, but, as of the testing date, is built on an older ZigBee module CC2652P2. On the bottom side of the case, under the caps, there are screws that hold its halves together. Let's see what's inside. The assembly of all components is done very neatly and of high quality, at a factory level. The component base is selected based on the experience of using previous ZigStar models. As I said, the CC2652P7 module from RFSTAR is used here, and the external antenna is connected to it. Here, the USB ART bridge CH340C is used, and the role of the control module is performed by ESP ROM32. Now it's time to connect the coordinator and see what it can do. In this test, I used a regular network connection, without PoE, and powered it via USB. By default, it is set to automatically obtain an IP address. We navigate to it and access the device's web interface. Those who have seen the SMLite interface will notice the similarity. As the firmware of the coordinator is currently under active development, I immediately went to the About section, where there is a link to the page with new firmware. The current version at the time of testing, I downloaded the one with the word full in the name. In the system and tools section on the second tab, I specify the path to the file and press the update button. By the way, an automatic update feature will be implemented here. The latest firmware will download and install itself. We wait a couple of minutes for the firmware to be installed and the device to restart. A similar feature is expected for updating the ZigBee module. Further tests were conducted on firmware version 0.1.5. As updates come out, if you are interested in the topic, I will talk about new features. Interface. 
On this page, as you have already understood, the main information is displayed. There are no external client connections yet. These refer to systems like Zigbee 2 in QTT or ZCHE. On the second tab, there is a switch for operation modes, Ethernet, which is set by default and, in my opinion, is the most appropriate. Wi-Fi, if a wired connection is not possible, and USB, like regular Zigbee sticks. Here you can also turn off or switch the state of the activity LEDs. The next page is Ethernet configuration. By default, it is set to receive an address from the router. An important point, the address of the coordinator should not change, as external clients will connect to it. Therefore, you either need to fix it on the router side or manually enter it here, disabling the DHCP mode. If you still decide to use Wi-Fi, which personally I do not recommend, Ethernet is more reliable and does not create additional interference for Zigbee operation, then on this page you will find its settings, network search, automatic or manual assignment of an IP address. The next tab, ZCHE and Z2M, contains settings for connecting external clients, the socket number and the serial port speed. I advise not to change them. Below is a settings generator with three tabs. The first two are for network mode operation, the first for Zigbee 2 MQTT. The second tab is for ZCHE, with which the coordinator also works excellently. And the third is for use in USB connection mode. Although in such a case, it's simpler to buy a regular USB Zigbee stick. On the security page, there are three options. The first disables the web server after the socket is connected, that is, an external client, Z2M or ZHA. The second, to enable authentication mode for accessing the web server. And the third, to restrict access by IP to devices connecting to the socket. The system and tools page. On the first tab, you can change the network name of the device and set the event log update interval. There are also options for rebooting modules, switching operation modes, and controlling LEDs. On the second tab, updating the firmware of the ESP module, debugging console, and file manager. As I mentioned earlier, among the expected changes soon are options for automatic firmware updates of ESP32 and the ability to update the Zigbee module from the web interface. And the last page, about the device, we've already been here. In addition to the transition to the firmware page, there is an option to report a discovered bug, open a ticket, or go to the official device page. Which, by the way, looks like this. The acronym USG stands for Universal Zigbee Gateway. In my previous reviews, I usually looked at cases of installing a new instance of Zigbee 2 MQTT, either the first one or a second one in parallel to an existing one. But I am often asked, is it possible to replace a USB Zigbee stick? And in this video, I decided to show just such a case. On this server, I am running a USB Sunoff ZB dongle P. I created a test network of devices that are now connected to it. Although there are only a few, 12 in total, but here are gathered both in devices and routers, ecosystems from both Tuya and Acura. So, even with a small number, to achieve the broadest coverage. The test is conducted on the current version of Zigbee 2 MQTT as of the date of the video, 1.35.1, and the stick's firmware is from May 23, 2023. Currently, Zigbee 2 MQTT is working with the USB 0 port, to which the stick is connected. Switching to a network coordinator allows physically separating it from the server, they can be located at a sufficiently large distance from each other. Secondly, with a network coordinator, multiple servers can work simultaneously, and it's easy to connect several such coordinators to one server, setting up a separate Zigbee 2 MQTT for each and creating their own network. I go to the settings page, add-ons, open Zigbee 2 MQTT, and stop it. We wait while the system stops. After that, the stick can be disconnected, but you can also leave it, it will not interfere. In my case, for the purity of the experiment, the stick was disconnected. Now we need the Zigbee 2 MQTT configuration file. By default, it is located in the root folder config, which has recently started to appear as Home Assistant, but it is actually still called config, which can be easily verified by connecting to the server over the network via Samba or through the console. In the serial section, delete, or better just comment out the USB stick port. Since the admin is currently stopped, Doing this through the web interface will not work. Now we insert here the part that relates to the serial section from the ZCHE and Z2M page of the network coordinator. The second part relates to the advanced section, where the maximum possible power of the Zigbee module is specified. That's all. Now we return to the add-ons page and start it. The first launch may take longer than usual, 
This is normal. We wait and observe the log. The add-on started and entries from devices began to appear in the log, which looks very promising. In the web interface of the coordinator, you can now see that one external client is connected to it. This is Zigbee 2MQTT. The list of devices, and for some, there are already fresh updates after the add-on launch. The system information page, nothing has changed here, as the same firmware is installed on Zigstar. Everything else, including the IEEE address was pulled up during the first start of the add-on. In the serial port information, we see a network address instead of USB, which was specified in the configuration file. The device panel. The data is there, and the control works. To make sure that everything is in order, I went through the device pages, checked turning on, changing parameters, turning off. Some devices immediately responded to commands and changes in the surrounding conditions. Some missed one or two first commands, but then worked normally. I checked all connected devices, none of the 12 test subjects needed to be reconnected. These screenshots show that the time of receiving the latest data is no more than two minutes. I consider the experiment of replacing a USB Zigbee stick with a network one to be successfully completed. However, with the caveat that both devices are built on CC2652P modules, although the stick is on version 2 and Zigstar is on version 7. If you're using something different, then things might go differently. In such a case, it's better to run a second Zigbee 2MUTT and gradually transfer devices one by one. With this, we conclude our first acquaintance with the new version of the Network Zigbee Coordinator. As you can see, changes have affected not only the Zigbee module but also the firmware, which has become more functional. Its capabilities are closer to the functionality of the firmware for SM Lite. The project's authors are actively developing it, and, I hope, soon I will be able to tell you about the new features. Once again, I express my gratitude to the Mind and UA store for providing the device and I recommend it as a reliable partner for ordering various interesting devices. That's all. I hope this video was useful and interesting to you. I would be grateful for your likes, they help promote it on YouTube. If you don't want to miss new reviews and lessons, subscribe to my channel. In the description under the video, you will find all the necessary links to the Zigstar Project website, the Mind and UA store, and the devices page in it, the Chinese counterpart, HMG01+, the reviews mentioned in the video, my Telegram channel, Facebook page, and a group for discussing smart home issues. Join us, it will be interesting. Thank you for your attention. Until new meetings, peace to everyone.